Well, another year and another NFC Championship loss. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Green Bay Packers 2020 season recap and off-season news and rumors. I'm your host, J-Man. Let's get into it. So the Green Bay Packers lost the NFC Championship game 31-26 against Tampa Bay Buccaneers back on January 26th. Looking at the stats, Aaron Rodgers had uh, went 33-48, 346 yards. He threw three touchdowns and one interception. Not a lot of rushing in the game. Aaron Jones carried the ball six times for 27 yards. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, otherwise known as MVS, had four catches, 115 yards, and one touchdown. Devontae Adams had nine catches for 67 yards and one touchdown. And Robert Tunyon also added to the passing game with four catches, 22 yards, and a touchdown as well. For Tampa Bay, Tom Brady threw the ball 36 times, completing 20 passes for 280 yards. He threw three touchdowns. And he also threw three interceptions, all of which coming in the second half. Leonard Fournette ran the ball for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 12 times for 55 yards and one touchdown. Chris Godwin caught the ball five times for 110 yards, and Mike Evans caught the ball three times for 51 yards and one touchdown. Some notes of the game. For the Green Bay Packers, the offense cannot get going. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense just proved to be too much. Aaron Rodgers was sacked five times. On the defensive side of the ball, the Green Bay Packers defense got exposed by Tom Brady and all of the great offensive weapons on that team. Excuse me. Uh, going into the game and just overall as the game went on, the team looked more and more defeated. Uh, not a lot of positivity on the sideline, just kind of being there, which is unfortunate because Rodgers is running out of time to get a Super Bowl. And especially with this game in Lambeau, I thought that going in it would be uh, great for Rodgers, great for the team. It would be positive. They'd be in home, they'd be in Green Bay have a positive atmosphere, but clearly that did not matter to Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Interesting stat that I found, Aaron Rodgers is the only QB in NFL history to lose multiple playoff games when throwing for three pass touchdowns or more. Because of this, because of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beating the Packers, Tom Brady and Tampa Bay got to play in the Super Bowl at their home stadium. This is the first time this has happened in NFL history. Uh, never before, up until this past year, this past Super Bowl, has a team played in their home stadium. Tampa Bay, Super Bowl was in Tampa Bay, so they essentially had home field advantage. On the AFC side of things, in the AFC Championship, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, threw the ball 38 times for 29 yards. He had 325, touch, or 325 yards excuse me, and three touchdowns. For the Bills, Josh Allen threw the ball 48 times, completing 28 passes for 287 yards. He threw two touchdowns and one interception. Uh, overall, the Bills looked, a good, looked good. I think they have a bright future, but that is in the future. They are one or two years away from becoming a legit contender. Uh, right now, the Chiefs are just too much. They have too much offensive firepower, and their defense is just good enough to get them by. So the Chiefs beat the Bills, which set up the Tampa Bay and Kansas City Super Bowl, hosted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, essentially, Super Bowl being in Tampa Bay. In Super Bowl 55, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 49 times for 26, or 49 times, completing 26 passes for 270 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. Brady threw the ball 29 times, completing 21 passes, had 201 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, this game was a blowout. I, no one was expecting that it would be. A lot of people thought that it would be an offensive shootout between Mahomes and Brady, kind of the remnants of the old dynasty versus the possible beginning of a new one. Uh, of course, old one being Tom Brady and Gronkowski and a couple of those guys, and the new dynasty that most likely will be the next 10 years of the Kansas City Chiefs. Tampa Bay wins this game 31-9, Tom Brady gets his seventh ring, and about 99% of America just cringes, and what can you do? I mean, it's Tom Brady, he's always had a great team around him, and he keeps winning. Gotta respect it. So, that brings us to the offseason. Green Bay Packers desperately needed to make some moves, and they have already made some moves at the time of me recording this video. Now, the first of 
these important moves was that the former defensive coordinator Mike Pettin was not resigned. He was not fired. His contract was up, and the Packers um, decided to part ways with Mike Pettin. Uh, shortly after the firing, if you will, of Mike Pettin, the Green Bay Packers went out and signed Joe Barry as the new defensive coordinator. His most recent position was an assistant on the defensive side of the ball for the Los Angeles Rams. So, um, not really a flashy hire. Uh, I believe it was Jim Leonard, the defensive coordinator of the Badgers, the Wisconsin Badgers, was the leading candidate. However, he decided to stay at the collegiate level. He is remaining with the Wisconsin Badgers as their defensive coordinator. So the Packers decided to go with Joe Barry. Uh, like I said, not a flashy hire, but I do have faith in Joe Barry. He's known as a linebackers guy, especially inside linebackers, a position that the Packers need to improve upon desperately if they want to become a legitimate contender. Uh, another one of the moves that the Packers made is that they have promoted Maurice Drayton to the special teams coordinator. This is an internal hire. Recently he was an assistant on the special teams coaching unit. Now he is the special teams coordinator. In the past few seasons it has been known that the Green Bay Packers have not had that great of a defense and their special teams has ranked in the bottom five of the NFL for cons in consistent years. Uh, for sure the last five years, if not more. So hopefully that um, hopefully that means that the Packers can improve on special teams. And then of course, with the new defensive coordinator, we will see what happens on that side of the ball. Excuse me. Um, like I said, the Packers addressed two of their main issues was, was uh, in defense and special teams. Now, some big issues coming up is the salary cap. Uh, the salary cap is expected to go down by uh, quite a bit for the 2021 season, so there are some personnel changes that will need to be made. Um, the Packers have already made one, moved, uh, one move. Starting left tackle, David Bakhtiari restructured his contract. Essentially, what restructuring means is they change some of your salary from guaranteed salary to a guaranteed signing bonus, so it does not count against the cap. Uh, the move that they did, they saved $8.3 million, so the Packers are still at about $20 million over the expected cap for 2021, so um, we will see what moves the Packers make in order to get under that cap. Two of the most notable free agents coming up are starting center Corey Lindsley, who is ranked in the top three of centers this past season. I believe he was actually the highest graded center this past season. And of course, starting running back Aaron Jones. Both of these guys, in my opinion, are most likely gone. We will not be resigning them. However, if we do have to resign, or if we do end up resigning one of these guys, if we are able to, I would rather sign Corey Lindsley because NFL history has shown that giving a running back a lot of money has not panned out well for the most part. Also, Preston Smith uh, likely will be cut with the rise of draft pick Rashawn Gary. Um, I don't think that Preston Smith will be around much longer unless he agrees to take a much cheaper deal. Dean Lowry is another candidate that is likely to be cut along with some other less notable names. Now one big rumor going on at the time of this recording is that recently J.J. Watt was released by the Texans and the reports that I have been seeing recently are that the Packers and Steelers are the leading contenders to get J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt is a defensive end, um, most recently played for the Texans. He, uh, the Watt, J.J. Watt and the Watt brothers, uh, J.J., T.J., and Derek Watt, they are from Wisconsin. They all played ball at um, Ford University of Wisconsin, so they have ties to Wisconsin, and they grew up as Packer fans. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I'm also not getting my hopes up because of our salary cap situation and the fact that J.J. Watt is going to want some good money. Um, if the Packers can get him to agree to a cheaper deal, then hopefully he'll agree to join and kind of solidify that defensive front and become, you know, play for a legit contender. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of have to wait and see what uh, Packers GM Brian Gutekunst does because he has been shown to make more, you know, building for the future rather than win now moves. Uh, hopefully this year he goes all in and makes some of those win now moves. But we will wait and see. And as the year goes on, as more news comes out, I will, of course, update you guys. That is all I have for now. I will talk to you guys later.